So we tried to get an update on Comcord's status. Ohio State starting quarterback today, Tuesday, at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center from Ryan Day, getting ready for a game at Rutgers on Saturday. Happens to be his home state, by the way, Comcord. His dad, Derek, played at Rutgers. So it's a big game for that family, a big game for him. However, Comcord was not well at Wisconsin. He was clearly hobbling around, clearly in some pain on the sidelines. We saw this in 2021, Stephen, when you got – not this far into the season. It was much earlier in the season. But C.J. Stroud in that game against Tulsa had the worst game of his career, I think you would say, and was clearly not right. Like, the shoulder was clearly a problem. Now, shoulder injury, bigger deal for a quarterback than a uh, ankle, knee, whatever McCormick Court is dealing with. But what Ohio State did in that circumstance was set him down for a week. Now, it was against Akron that Common Court got to start. It was against – it was not a Big Ten road game against a team that already has six wins this year and is a pretty good defense – so that has to be a factor here. Any thought that you think the Ohio State should have to, even if Kyle McCord can play, to sit him down, to give him another week of rest, and let him heal up to be better for the biggest games that are still coming ahead? You can even go back further than that. We've seen quarterbacks in the past have to step in. You know, Kenny Guyton had to step in for Braxton Miller at times. Dwayne Haskins had to step in the Michigan game for JT Barrett. So Ohio State's dealt with this before. I think this one is complicated because Devin Brown is also out with an injury. So it's not as simple as, oh, the other guy that you thought was startable for you, he just didn't win the battle here, can just step in for you this week and we get an extended look at Devin Brown. You're going to Tristan Jebbia, which then puts you in a situation of what if something happens to Tristan Jebbia and now you have to play true freshman Lincoln Keenholz, which might have a ceiling. They might have a high ceiling, but he's nowhere near ready to play college football. I think they have to try it with Kyle McCord and see how he looks. I think you can offset it by I'm going against my own instincts here. You got to run the ball a lot early and a lot often, especially if Travion Henderson and Chip Trainum are ready, to, are ready to go for you. You have to lean heavily on this run game against Rutgers because you can't put Kyle McCord out there and ask him to throw the ball 30 times. He's clearly not healthy enough to do that right now. He only threw it seven times against Wisconsin in the second half. So I think the lack of Devin Brown makes it – this is probably a yes, 100% of Devin Brown is healthy, but because he's not, you've got to let Kyle McCord see if he can go out there and do it. And if anything goes wrong, then, like, sure. If it gets through the first couple of series and it's like, eh, it doesn't look right, then you go to Tristan Jebbia. But I think you have to try it out from the from the get-go. The, the slight difference, the reason that I mentioned the Stroud thing was because that was completely, like, precautionary. It wasn't because he was too hurt to play. Well, actually, he probably was in some ways. But it was more, we're giving him this week off because he's got to get that shoulder right. And maybe he also kind of had to get his head right, I think, at that point of his young career. And it, it worked because he was awesome from that point on. Andrew, so and the other thing that they could do is Tristan Jebbia could start, Kyle McCord could be the backup. So then if something happened to Kyle McCord, there is your backup plan, I, I suppose. Uh, did dress yeah. that game, so. so, I mean, it, it, you would still have him there if you needed him. Uh, but, Andrew, do you feel like it's it, – from what you've seen and heard – because Ryan Day today was asked from several different angles – um, about how hurt Kyle McCord is and how it affects how he's playing. And kind of the answer you kept coming back to was, uh, you know, Rubin's racing. You got to go out and play football, right? You got to go out and and just find a way to get through it. I mean, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. It sounds like he's talking about Kyle McCord being hurt and not injured. Yeah, I, I think what you do is what Stephen was saying a little bit. I think you install the game plan this week and you – shrink it a little bit you run the ball maybe you take a couple quick throws you and you know bubble screens quick quick slants things like that maybe you don't roll him out maybe you keep him in the pocket you don't have him move around I mean he's not like if his ankle's bothering him he's not going to be the one to take off and run so you don't really and he, they don't really do that anyway with him so you don't really have to worry about limiting the playbook in that regard but I do think you have to limit it in some regard because you can't put him in danger now what I would do if it, it, it all depends on the re-injury risk, because if the re-injury risk is pretty low, all right, then at some point he's like Ryan Day was saying, you got to go out and play football. If the re-injury risk is high or he re-injures it at Rutgers or something like that happens where he very clear, like we saw Wisconsin, you know, there was a play where he got knocked down and he got up and he got up like very carefully, like he was trying to do a tightrope act and he was not putting any weight on that leg. Like if, if that's the case, then you have to kind of balance, okay, one, is he going to re-injure this and how does this affect the Michigan game? What does this do at the end of the season? And two, what percentage of Kyle McCord is not as good as Tristan Jebbia, right? Like is 
of common core better is 30 percent is 80 percent like like where's the limit to a healthy tristan jevia versus common core and you have to find out what that is and if common core can't run or can't plant or can't do anything then you got to take him out because you can't run the offense but it all depends on how he manages the pain i think and what the re-injury risk is so you go in with a limited game plan or at least a more limited game plan in terms of what you're going to ask him to do in terms of moving getting him around moving him around the pocket you know, you try to get more quick throws in there so he's not taking as many shots. And if it does go off the rails, you got to be ready to pull the shoot if you need to. One piece of news today that was slightly unexpected was Ryan Day saying that Devin Brown will practice today, Tuesday. And he had originally said he's going to be out for at least a couple of weeks. Well, it was really only like one week. It was last week, and now he's back at practice today, although Ryan Day was very cautious about it, said, like, we'll see how it goes you know, definitely not saying he's going to be, you know, back in uniform on Saturday. He did not make the trip to Wisconsin. But that would also maybe change the calculus here a little bit as far as not because you would make Devin Brown the starter this Saturday. I don't think he's probably going to be ready for that. But in far as far as the how quickly you might go to Tristan Jebbia, how you might organize that. But ultimately, I think you're right, Andrew. And I think especially because of what this game is for Kyle McCord, getting to go back to Rutgers. They're not going to be going back there every other year in the future. They don't think they even play them next year. So, like, this is his one shot to go back to Rutgers and play as a starting quarterback. I think that probably means a lot to him. Uh, hopefully we talk to him on, on Wednesday and find out more. But I think that alone is enough reason for him and for Ohio State to push it. But, again, I go back to the way Ryan Day was talking today. He didn't talk with great concern about the injury. It's more about – gutting your way through it and then also correcting those other things um to, to make the performance better that don't have anything to do with the injury so we'll tell you more as soon as we hear it later this week hopefully when we hear from common cord himself that'll come to our text 614-350-3315 and get buckeye talk wherever you can find podcasts five days a week